Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. Cameron Wood alongside Jason Bliss live here at the Collins Pearly Sports Complex bringing you Vermont High School Boys Hockey Action Division I uh, reigning state champions, the BFA Bob Whites coming off back-to-back championship seasons. Uh, Toby Duclon's last season coming up uh, is well-known in this community, known for winning, plenty of talent. Uh, and tonight we look to kind of hunger on this Northeast Clinton team that clearly has struggled to score goals and gives up a boatload of them, Jason. And I'm looking for this Bob White, these top three lines, to really take advantage of that. Yeah, you got to think BFA is going to jump on this quick, get uh, get fast, get physical during this game, and uh, get a lot of shots on net like they did last game. Uh, this looks like a smaller Northeast Clinton team, uh, so look for BFA's bigger bodies to uh, you know use their physicality and, uh, like I said before, get those uh, quality shots on net and uh, pick up those rebounds. Yeah, Michael Telfer with another great game that we saw last week. Uh, saw some scoring chances from Spalding. A lot of shots on the outside regardless. I think he piled on roughly like 25 saves or so. And then Rathburn coming in for another half dozen there. So BFA goaltending looking solid. Um, again, we don't know a ton about this Northeast Clint team. But from growing up and knowing the youth program, they've always been physical, chippy, and very hungry and, and, and looking to wear you down. Yeah, look for them to uh, be very physical, especially if they get frustrated with this BFA team. So we are underway, folks, as BFA wins the draw, getting it into their offensive zone. Bob White's maintaining possession. Northeast Clinton picking it up through the neutral zone. Going the other way is number 10, Racine. BFA gaining control. Ethan Audie in front of the net loses the puck. Northeast Clinton trying to pick it up, unable to do so. Audie finding a way to gather the puck, skating through the neutral zone. He's going to chip it down in as Duclon calls for a quick change here, about 45 seconds in. Quick change there for BFA. Good option there. Northeast Clinton getting it down low is Lavalley. Lavalley with it in the corner. Quick pass in front, and there's a great shot and an early opportunity by Ebersole from LaValle as Northeast Clinton getting the first scoring opportunity of this game, not even a minute in. Yeah, good opportunity there by Ebersole, just being right in the slot, but Telfer having no trouble with that, uh, covering it up quick. Letourneau with it at the point, shot goes wide. With it now is Savoy for the Bob Whites, looking to break out. Looking for Beauregard, can't find him. He's going to skate it his own. Savoy with it, shot there, that goes wide. Northeast Clinton going the other way is number two, Reed LaValle. Just quickly, Jason, I can tell that the captain, LaValle, is going to be one of these key players for Northeast Clinton if they want to have a chance tonight. Yeah, he's a good skater, looking good so far. So, ooh, good shot there by Beauregard. So Bobo with a quick shot on net. He had two assists last game. Top three in the scoring for the Bob Whites through three games so far. Look for him to be a key contributor to this program this season. Four guard, big body in front of the net for this Bob White team. Cammy Johnson with it now, looks to break it out, can't do so. Puck comes to the point, shot there on net, and Telfer does a good job getting the whistle there as Owen Roberts shot, unable to go through as it's gloved down. You know, nothing wrong with Northeast Clinton getting the puck on net. You know, nice, easy shot, looking for the rebound. So good to see that they're uh, getting those shots on net so far. Northeast Clinton winning the draw shot at the point by Roberts. That goes wide. BFA with it in their defensive zone. Trying to break it out through Rafferty. Can't do so as Simpson will take that and get it down low. BFA circling back around. Gets it all the way down. And no icing there as it's waved off. Puck in front to Colin Audi. Skates by it. And Northeast Clinton goes the other way. Racine with it now. Fast breaking. 1v4 as his line mates look to get a change. Racine out front, pass intercepted by Cam Johnson. With it now for the Bob Whites, Camden Piper gets it out into the neutral zone. 
with it in center ice. Ooh. Shot there on net as Jutkins didn't really see that clear cut. Makes the blocker save, puck goes wide. But a last second shot there that wasn't really visibly seen from the get-go. Yeah, it was an odd, almost like a boomerang type of shot. Took a little turn towards the end, but Judkins got a uh, blocker on it. Ethan Audie with it, trying to get it out, can't do so. As Eversole throws it back down in. BFA will take this time to break it out. Levi Webb to Audie. Audie, shot wide. Northeast Clinton looking to circle back around. They do so. 2 on 1 now is Northeast Clinton. Shot there wow. and they score. Wow. Northeast Clinton with an early punch on the BFA Bob White's Winfred Simpson with the rip off the far bar. And we talked about him early, and it looks like it may be often. Just, in the case of the Cougars. Excuse me, Cam. Just a beautiful uh, two-on-one there. And Simpson saw the ice in front of him and decided not to make the pass on that two-on-one. Posting in for Winfred Simpson, the fourth. Beautiful shot there off the post and in. Telfer uh, had a little trouble with that one, I think. Shot blocked wide there. Gives me an idea on our next context. I know we had a difficult time last time as it was rapid fire and we missed some play-by-play -play for goals. But Northeast Clinton shot wide. Great break up by Beauregard. As Wilbur will try to go the other way. However, Northeast Clinton gets it down low and gets a line change. Yeah, good goal there by Simpson. Assist by... Uh... Peyton Palmer and Reed LaValle. So uh, good little two-on-one there by Northeast Clinton to capitalize on that two-on-one. And, and geez, Jason, we saw the four win over Plattsburgh High, the public school, not the Catholic school BFA's used to playing, but we also see, saw them get absolutely romped by two other teams we're not familiar with by double digits. And from what we've seen so far, they must have played some pretty good teams because this team is no joke thus far. Yeah, they're playing very well so far. Uh, they played a team, Rye, a team I've never heard of, uh, with a 13 to nothing loss. I mean, that's big numbers put up. And then playing Storm King, uh, I don't know if they're close to the border of Canada yeah. and New yeah. York, but uh, a 10 to 1 loss to them. But so far tonight, this Northeast Clinton team is not fooling around with this early 1 nothing lead over BFA. And I know with that being said, Toby had mentioned not only this game, but the MVU game. These teams are going to come at you the first two and then potentially fizzle out because of their lack of depth. But I don't know. This team seems much better than the Spalding team they saw a couple weeks ago. So down quickly 0-1 with about 9.45 left in the first. Yeah, and we've seen these smaller teams, but yet physically fit, you know, um, so this, you know, they could be physically fit even this uh, early in the season. And there's a great pass in front that's unable to get collected. However, gaining possession is Northeast Clinton as Chevalier Ooh. shoots one wide. And there's that physicality by Northeast Clinton. As we see a check there on the far side board. Shot goes on net. Telfer going to gobble that up as we look to see him kind of be disciplined. We saw him come out of the net a little bit, kind of get his rocker shook in a little bit, but probably going to stay a little bit more sound and take those whistles, especially when they're down one nothing early. Yeah, that's a smart move uh, this early in the period, but Corbin Schreindorfer went in the boards uh, over by the BFA section pretty hard, but it looks like he's all right. BFA with it now, looking to break it out. Is Matty Marrow looking for Colin Audie? Can't find him. Northeast Clint going the other way. Chips it down as Racine gives chase. Look for Racine and Simpson to get a boatload of time tonight. You know, I feel like BFA's having trouble just getting into Northeast Clinton's zone yeah. here. Um, well, Audie's making it in, but. Audie with some wheels now on his backhand. Can't break through. Northeast Clint taking advantage, breaking the other way. Two on two. Now one on two. Shot there that's chipped up and over the net of Telfer. 
BFA really no quality shot so far. They had that one shot and, uh, you know, that kind of odd blocker save, but that's about it right now. BFA with it, trying to break it out. Can't do so as Chevalier throws it all the way back down. Maddie Merrill chips it out of the defensive zone. However, puck collected by Northeast Clinton. Johnston gets it down low for Clinton. Audie's going to pick it up for the Bob Whites, break it out the other way. Audie skating, shoots it all the way down. Savoy with it, four checking for the Bob Whites, circles back around. He's got Beauregard, doesn't find him. Up top to Frady's. Frady's shot on net, tip there just wide by Beauregard. Good chance by the Bob Whites. And that's going to be flipped out. And BFA will have to regroup in center ice as Frady rips one off the far bar. And geez, um, Jason, Judkins hasn't seen a handful of shots at this point. Yeah, Frady's coming in the zone just, you know, out of nowhere, ripping a shot off the post, and Judkins got lucky on that one. There's about a handful of shots that Jud Judkins just hasn't seen. Uh, I, I don't want to write the kid off, but I think, hey, start throwing some pucks right. on the net because this kid is not seeing the puck Right, well. those deeper shots. Hey, uh, once you've seen a couple go on net and he's not really sure where they are, keep doing it. Going the other way is, Sh is Simpson. Simpson looks for his man. Palmer can't find him. Simpson goes and collects, chips it out in front. Puck in front of the net. There's a battle there, and Telford does a good job covering up. Complex starting to fill in a little bit, Jason, even with an out-of-state crowd. Yeah, a lot of bodies in front of the net there, and that gets a little uh, little hectic for Telford trying to track it down with about five or six bodies in front of him. But uh, Northeast Clinton is really surprising me. I, I got to say, this is a fast pace so far. Can they keep up this pace? Yeah. Is 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 what the you know what we're going to be looking at later and, on in this and, game? And it's I don't know if this kind of speaks on Vermont high school hockey. I know there's been a lot of question about the depth of it, how it's weakened over the years with kids going to prep school, playing for different travel teams. But I mean, we talk about this being the best team, the deepest team, and here's a two line Northeast Clint team that's gotten ran by other programs. Yeah, and. To me, they've had more opportunities than BFA has. I mean, they've got five quality shots on net so far. One's a goal, and BFA with only three. I mean, it's they're getting outplayed. BFA better pick up the pace if they're going to be in this game. So about six minutes left in the first. one nothing Northeast Clinton, as we mentioned. Shot there, down on Telfer. And, and I've also noticed this, Bliss, is Northeast Clinton doing a good job getting 25, 35, 45 second shifts. They're constantly getting guys on and off the ice, which I think is huge against this Bob White team. Yeah, and you know that comes from good coaching, knowing, you know, getting your guys in that routine of those quick shifts. Northeast Clinton with it now in their offensive zone, up along the board, shot there, goes wide. BFA trying to break it out is Wood. Wood able to get it in center ice. However, Chevalier picks that up and throws it back down for Northeast Clinton. Oh, good, good hit there. BFA going the other way. Three on two is his first line. Merrill with wheels now. Circles back around behind the net. Gets it to Audie. Audie with it in front. Tries to get it out to Webb. However, unable to do so. Puck comes up top to Audie. Ethan, that is. Shot goes wide. Just under five minutes left in the first. Levi Webb picks it up from the corners. Shot there as that goes wide. You know, Cam, Northeast Clinton doing a good job with their stick work on a lot of these plays, just picking up BFA's stick. Wraparound opportunity there. Marrow rips that as that goes wide. Up top to the point. Over to Audie. Audie for the point. Ooh. Puck deflected just wide as there's an opportunity on the far door there. And that puck looks like maybe it went up and out of play. Hard for me to see. But Northeast Clinton just doing a good job with their stick work, poking the puck away from BFA, getting in front of shots. Very good with their defensive stick work and not allowing BFA to really settle the puck down and make these tape-to-tape -tape passes in the offensive zone. So, uh, yeah, they're, they're a force to be reckoned with right now. 
Again, having some issues with the audio, so the communication may be off a little bit. Please forgive us. Working on getting that fixed. BFA with it in the offensive zone. Lanfear pinches up, and it looks it's like, we like got a we've got a hooking call. Is that going to be on? I think it's on uh, Northeast Clinton, is it? Yeah, Racine. Yeah. So it looks like Lamp kind of stepped up to uh, pinch that play. Good job by Lamp here. Thought he stepped in well to the defensive role last game as he was on that third line uh, for offense. But uh, he draws the penalty, so good job for Lamp there. Yeah, and Palm. Oh, excuse me. Palmer going to the box for Northeast Clinton. Sorry, Cam. No, no problem. Just saying quick opportunity to even this up before the end of the period. So excuse first. Excuse me, Racine going to the box. Love the correction. Bob White's with it up top. Shot by Audi. That's deflected wide. It looks like we had our backup support show up, so that's exciting. Shot there. That goes wide. Audi doing a good job getting low, hard shots on net. Pass in front. Shot. Puck in front. Rebound. Oh. He scores! Tammy Johnson with his fourth point of the year. Second goal, two assists as he gets the rebound and rips it off the bar and in. Total. And I tell you what, Cam Johnson, who stepped into a role last year, didn't see much time because of injury the year before, has really kind of emerged as one of these defenders for the Bob Whites early and often. Yeah, Johnson, uh, two assists, one goal and two assists last game. A lot of trash in front of the net. BFA had a close chance. I think it was Audi in front of the net the first chance, and then it just came out to Johnson, and he just buried it off the post and in. So uh, good good time to take advantage uh, of that uh, power play. So 1-1 one, one with 322 is Johnson. So it looks so it looks like Colin Audi and Aiden Savoy get the assist. Aiden getting his sixth point in two games. Colin as well. I know he had an assist last game. He's been known for moving this puck. But a great effort there as the Bob Whites uh, produce tremendous pressure in front of the Northeast Clinton goalie to even this up. You know, and BFA starting to get these quality chances, taking advantage of that power play and uh, tying this game back up. Good save there by Telfer. So Northeast Clint coming back with a great opportunity is Palmer. Shot blocked by Telfer, goes wide. BFA going the other way. Wood getting it down low. Third unit out here for the Bob Whites. Cam Johnson with it up top. Tip just wide by Schreindorfer. Good tip there, just in the wrong direction. Scrummage behind the net. Rafferty with it. Gets it to Wood. Wood up top to Piper. Back to Wood. Chips it down low to Rafferty. Third unit cycling very well right now, Jason. Yeah, very well. Wood with it behind the net. Circling back around on his backhand. Chips it to Rafferty. Rafferty looking for Dry Schreindorfer. Will circle back around. Can't find him. Puck comes up the boards and comes out as Northeast Clint gets away from some tremendous pressure there on that last play. Yeah, it's tiring having a line cycling in on you and just doing so well at that. And that's what uh, Wood and Schreindorfer and uh, Lanfear were doing on that shift. Just beautiful Rafferty. cycling. Or Rafferty, excuse yeah. me. And uh, that was that was solid, uh, solid cycling just to tire these guys down. Excuse so me. So 136 left in the first. 1-1. Uh, again, I, I, I hate to see what this Rye and who was the other team, but this is a much better team than what we saw out of Spalding earlier in the week. Ooh. Or sorry, a couple weeks ago for that matter. Puck in front, oh. wrapped around. Shot is saved by Judkins. Judkins starting to get a little comfortable making some nice saves for yeah. Northeast. I think he was flat on his back there and managed to uh, make a save. Puck in front, passed over to Webb, can't find it. Comes out to the point. 
as Phelps rips it back down low, puck in front, pass there to Audi. Audi with his rebound, can't get it in. And another great opportunity as Maddie Merrill does a good job fishing it out to call in Audi, who not only gets a shot, but a rebound. And sure enough, there's Northeast Clinton to kind of chip away and, and, and physically push the Bob Whites out of the crease. Yeah, Judkins just gobbling up that rebound off of Audi. And, uh... and it looks like that rebound on Audi, they called him for a slashing wow. on the goalie. Wow. All right, so BFA going to the box. Late in this first period, not a time you really want to take a penalty, but uh, hopefully they can kill it off. I mean, in Collins' case, there was no whistle. Like, no, you no. Play to the whistle, but um, I, I don't know that it's a slashing. We're going to find out and listen in here shortly. Here we go. Yeah. yeah. So I'm no guru, Jason, but I've done it long enough to kind of pick up on the calls. No, uh... I mean, it's tough when you get, you know, those rebounds trying to get the, you know, trying to get the puck loose. Puck at top to Simpson, over to his defenseman, shot there, good save. Savoy going the other way, breakaway if he has it, he does, one-on-one, -on -one, and he scores! Aiden Savoy buries it, beats two guys through the neutral zone, doesn't even have to make a move, lets the goaltender slide one way and he buries it left just inside the bar to give the Bob Whites a 2-1 lead with 25 seconds left in the first. You know we talked about Savoy getting the puck off his stick quick and he took off in the neutral zone there had one of the Northeast Clinton players fall down was kind of by himself and just managed to just get the puck off his stick super quick bottom left corner and Judkins could not make the save. Seventh point of the year. Wow. I, I, I think it's safe to say because we didn't see a ton from Aiden last year, even having a regular shift on this team, but him finding another gear against Spalding, I think it's clear cut. Aiden Savoy here to stay and making an impact on this BFA team early. Yeah, I mean, uh, just just phenomenal. I mean, he's... He, Short-handed, by the way. Short-handed. <laughs> I mean, he's... He's just, I don't know what he did over the summer, but he, he, he's, yeah. you know. I mean, he's hes always been a player for them. He's been a regular shift, but now he's just, I, he, he, it's like he's one step ahead right. of everyone else as we get the triple zeros here. Uh, but again, big penalty goal by Aiden Savoy. I think it was unassisted as it was a broken up pass yeah, in the I, defensive. Si or no, I thought he was going to announce it, but. So seven okay, I think shot. those were just shots there. Shots. So, with that being said, yeah, Aiden Savoy breaking up the play. I believe it was unassisted. Is that what you had? I think so. Um, but Savoy, five goals, two assists this year, seven points on the year. He's, I mean, in two games, that is just incredible for this yeah. kid. And, uh, yeah, I mean, it was nope. a tough first half of that period for yeah. BFA, but they really came around. And uh, the last half of that period, got a, f a lot more quality shots and got a couple pucks in the net. We're going to get much more into that as we get into our first intermission. However, we do have technical support here, so we certainly want to take advantage. Before I let them cut in, quick reminder here, Northwest Access TV is a nonprofit organization. If you're enjoying the sports coverage throughout the year, please consider making a donation. Just visit northwestaccess.tv backslash donation. With that being said, Bob White's up 2-1. Cam Wood alongside Jason Bliss. Just going to take a quick intermission, and then we'll be back to highlight the first period for you. Thanks. Go ahead. Jason, uh, Cameron Wood alongside Jason Bliss. Welcome back to the Collins Pearly Sports Complex. We had the audio just figured there, and now it just touched out, so it may be difficult for us to hear again. Uh, but BFA out 2-1 early, um, kind of stumbled early, but making a dent there in the late stages, had the shorthanded goal by Savoy and the great opportunity where Cam Johnson capitalized. But we're starting to see a uh, pattern here as far as the Bob Whites contributing to this offense is concerned. 
Yeah, I mean, BFA struggling the first half of that whole, you know, period, really just not getting good chances. Finally capitalizing, in, capitalizing on that first power play and then later in the stages of that uh, first period. So good to see uh, BFA up 2-1 going into the second. Yeah, and with that being said, we're going to do our Northwest Access Power Rankings or Jason Cam Wood alongside uh, Jason. Kind of a mix-up. Again, folks, if something seems out of line, not all the games are posted on VPA. Looks like they have a third party. I think it's like SB Live factoring in their right. their rankings and their index points. So it's tough to kind of make out who's played what games. But from what we've gathered so far through this, well, I guess it would be the third or fourth week of the season as BFA's had two games canceled. A little bit of a mix-up at the top as this week, number one, Rice 4-0 takes the spot. Yeah, Rice number two last week, uh, 4-0, win over 3-2 uh, over Colchester, a 5-4 win over Niagara, a 1-0 win over South Burlington, and a 4-1 win over CVU. Tough not to give them the first spot being 4-0 uh, uh, in the first part of this year. Number two, Essex 2-0. Two yeah, Essex uh, kept them in the same spot. You know, Essex is a strong team every year. Uh, they had a huge win over uh, Spalding, 6-1 to in the Doc Tulip, and then a 5 to nothing win over Woodstock. So only allowing one goal, goal against this year, uh, looking like they're going to be another strong team. Followed by BFA, who moves down to number three with just that one win, 7-1 against Spalding. Yeah, BFA dropping two spots. You know, we're... Doing that just uh, in theory of, you know, only playing one game and, uh, you know, not not really having any justification to put them uh, in a higher spot. Uh, followed by number four, Colchester at three and one. Yeah, Colchester three and one up one spot from last week. Last week they were number five. They had a three to two win versus CVU, a one to nothing win uh, BHS had to uh, forfeit that game and a three to two loss to Basically, our number one spot, Rice, uh, in a huge 11 nothing win over MVU, which makes a huge statement for them uh, going into later parts of this season. And the newcomer to the power rankings is number five, Hartford at 3-0. and Yeah, we saw Hartford. They kind of came out of nowhere on us and uh, put them in the number five spot. 10-1 to win over St. Jay, 10-1 to win over Northfield, and an 8-2 to win over Woodstock. Um, so they are solid so far with no losses. So that's your new Power 5 Northwest Access rankings. Again, a short intermission because technical difficulties. Having the same issues now, we're going to take a quick break, and we'll be back momentarily to get the puck drop of the second period. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. Cameron Wood alongside Jason Bliss. Looks like we got those technical difficulties out of the way. If it wasn't portrayed as we were listening or going through it, we apologize. But play underway here in the second period as the Bob Whites are up 2-1 to one against Northeast Clinton. Been a good game so far, Jason. Yeah, very good. BFA coming late in that first period, finally getting up uh, a lead in this game. But Northeast Clinton so far not going anywhere, moving fast into the zone. 30 seconds left on the Audi slashing. So Northeast Clinton on the power play. Shot block there. Puck goes down low. As Northeast Clinton looking to get a goal to tally this up. Pass up top. Number 10 with it for Northeast Clinton. Racine circles back around. Shot there. Gets his own rebound behind the net. Doing work now is Racine. He'll circle back up top. Gives it to his defensive partner. Shot there in front. Rebound. And great save by Michael Telfer as Racine finds a way to get that puck in front. And sure enough, Northeast Clinton get a good shot there, but Telfer there, see, there to see the save. Yeah, first shot uh, saved by Telfer. Another shot uh, rebound out. And uh, Telfer tracking it very well in the first stage of this period right at the end of that Audi penalty. BFA winning the draw. Behind the net is Colby Phelps. Looks to break it out, and that goes up and out of play. Due to the short intermission, Jason, quickly, I'm just going to chime in here. Let's take a moment to thank our sponsors, Northwestern Orthopedics, Collins Pearly Sports and Fitness Center, Barrett Ford, JC Image, 
Handy Toyota, if your business would like to be a sponsor for Northwest Access, Access TV sports coverage this winter, please contact 802-782-8676. And with that, Savoy going the other way. Already a goal and assist tonight as that's his seventh, sixth and seventh point in the season. Seventh, yeah, it's crazy. He's having a year so far. Just two games. Yeah, no, it's, it's early, but hey. Seven, seven points through four periods. I mean, <laughs> he, he is just releasing the puck like I've never seen him uh, in the past couple of years. Yeah. So this second line seeing a lot of action Ooh. in front of the net. Puck in the neutral zone. Northeast Clinton gets it all the way down. They'll take that opportunity to get a change. Shot blocked there as Letourneau tries to get it down low. However, Wilbur doing a good shot blocking that from going any further. Northeast Clinton with it now in their defensive zone, looking to break it out through the neutral zone. Letourneau going the other way. Shot there. Cam Johnson blocks it wide. Frady's picking it up, getting it to Rafferty. Rafferty trying to break it out the other way. Gets it by his defenseman, two oh. on one if he hurries. Puck comes back to Wood. He shuffles that back to Rafferty. Both of them doing work in the corner. However, picked up by Northeast Clinton and being broken out the other way by Racine on the near side boards here. Puck yeah. comes out to Piper. Piper shoots it back down. Northeast Clinton with it, circling back behind the net is Chevalier. Chevalier breaking it out through the neutral zone, picked up by Wood. Wood throws that. Back down low, and looks like it might have went up and over the boards for a whistle here. Tough break there for BFA, trying to get in the zone. I think Laterno, the referee, might have gotten in the way on the boards, but, you know, that happens. Got Laterno and Streeter, the two officials here, both veterans. So 11.56 left in the second, 2-1 Bob Whites, as you can see on the screen. BFA winning that down low. Audi looks to get in front of the net. Can't do so. Picked back up by number two, Lavalle. Lavalle with it, getting it down low for Johnston. Johnston getting it back to Lavalle. However, unable to do anything as the puck comes out of the zone. Stretch pass there by Northeast Clinton as they make the zone again. And there's a shot on net as Telfer makes the glove save from the weak pressure on the outside of the Cougars' possession. You know, Northeast Clinton, good rushes through the neutral zone, a lot of speed coming in, and they are not slowing down at this point uh, early on in this second period. Puck dropped, BFA unable to win possession. However, Savoy intercepts it, chips it to Beauregard, gets it out. And puck thrown back down low on Telfer. He'll push that over to his near side defensive partner. However, we have a whistle. Looks like maybe an offsides. Yeah, I think it was offsides. Looks like they're going to be just outside of BFA zone. BFA making a line change. So Phelps and Frady's out there with this second unit. Wilbur, Bobo, and Savoy. Puck thrown down low. Racine picks it up for Northeast Clinton. Frady's with it now behind his defensive end. Breaks it out to Bobo. Bobo not able to push it out. Simpson with it now. Shot there off of Frady's. Goes behind the net. Phelps picks it up. Pass it over to Savoy. Savoy looking to get it to Wilbur. However, Phelps comes in to support. Goes back to Wilbur, and the puck able to be pushed back down by Northeast Clinton. Good shift As, here by Northeast Clinton. Yeah, they're doing a good job here cycling. Puck thrown in front. Frady says a good job pushing it off to the corner. BFA chips it out. That will be a delayed offsides. Good shift there by Northeast Clinton, just not letting BFA to get out of the zone. Here comes Savoy with speed, circling back around, looking for a man. He'll cut back. Going the other way behind the net, circling back around. Pass out front to his defenseman, Frady's. Shot by Frady's, that's blocked. And Northeast Clinton looking to break it out the other way. Can't do so as it's intercepted by Johnson. And BFA will get a change as this third unit comes out for the Bob Whites. 
Good break out there by Northeast Clinton. Having no trouble breaking out of their zone so far in this game. Gaye with it down low. Pressure on Piper. Piper trying to break it out through Schreindorfer. Having trouble as Liam Wood comes in to support. Liam Wood with it now below the net. Piper in to help. Puck comes up top to Schreindorfer. Schreindorfer rips it down and around behind the net as Bob White's unable to break it out that way. Liam Wood with it. He's got plenty of room. Good pass there to Schreindorfer. Schreindorfer trips up on his own pass. And Puck comes back down as Johnson now Ooh. moving with that as he makes a good hit in there in center ice. Liam Wood with it down behind the net. Tied up in his skates. Comes up top to Johnson. Johnson, good job chipping it down as BFA trying to get the first unit out there as they gain offensive pressure. But Puck going the other way, two on two. Long shift there for that line. A yeah. lot of hard work in their own zone and then just having to try to make something happen. Northeast Clinton up top, shot there. Telford didn't really see much of that as that goes just wide. With it now is Colin Audi as he looks to find Merrill. However, Puck intercepted and pushed back down, being broken out the other way through Webb. Webb chips it around his defender. He's got speed, looking for Merrill in front, circling back up top. Puck intercepted by Racine as he breaks up that pass. BFA still with it, good move there by Webb. Webb to Audi. And again, she's a Simpson. Simpson and Racine saying a lot of them tonight. Yeah, a lot of speed here. Uh. Lanfear's got it, plenty of speed as he's going end to end, circling back around looking for a guy. Shot below the net, comes up top to Merrill. Merrill with it, circling. Cross crease pass, Ooh. puck in front, and that gets pushed wide as there's a good opportunity there. Right between Judkins' legs and uh, one of the, uh, I think it was Chevalier, knocking it away from the front of the net. 7.20 left in the third, BFA with it. Beauregard looping, he's got an opportunity, Ooh. and Beauregard! Rips one top shelf over the near side corner. And Judkins wanted no part of that save as he just lets it fly by. You know, Borgard coming out of the corner, using his open space, seeing that ice in front of him, and just unleashing a beautiful shot into that top left corner. And that's... He sees the ice so well. He's a big body, and he used the space he had in front of him and uh, made this Northeast Clinton team pay, and Judkins would like to have that one back. And Bobo with his third point of the year, getting his first goal. Already had two assists from last game, so he's starting to add on to the stats as well. You know, you're seeing these second and third line really racking up the yeah, points here. Yeah, especially the second line specifically. Um... You know, the first line's been together for a while. Certainly your most talented players not only moving the, not always moving the puck, and here's a breakaway by Savoy as there's a great blocker saved by Judkins and Beauregard unable to get the rebound, but another opportunity by the Bob Whites with about 6.30 left in the period. Um, but no, I was going to say, you know, the second line just kind of, getting everybody involved, moving the puck. You haven't really seen that necessarily out of the first line, um, but as a result, it's a team effort, and all lines kind of contributing for that matter. Yeah, definitely. You want to see that out of your team, and I think that might be Audie's uh, third assist of the year. So Audie was possibly still on the ice for that last goal. We'll wait to see. Audie had the second assist, and Webb had the third, so... Oh, okay. Yep. And Collins got an assist this game, and he had uh, he's got two assists this game, one last game. Yep. Okay. So Rafferty making a great play along this along the boards, using his speed. Tripped up, however. 
Oh boy. Looks, Looks like both. You take both of them to the box, I think. So the last goal was Beauregard from Audie and Webb. Audie and Webb. Weber had a goal last game as well. Um, Audie with his third assist. Yep. Yeah, I mean, we all, uh, Colin Zoe has been known to move the puck. I mean, that's what he does best for this team. I think him and Liam Wood are two of your better puck distributors. Um, Colin's been doing it a little bit longer, and it obviously shows. Yeah. Uh, matching penalty is going to be five on five. I think it's uh, Rafferty. I'm not sure who went to the box for Northeast Clinton. Good burst there by Raff to kind of try to make a play there. He beat his first defender and then was just tripped up. But Yeah, they had a little... A little back and forth in front of the net there. So Wood passes up top to Piper. Piper goes wide of the net. Puck up top to Johnson. Johnson on net. Great tip there. Great tip by Gregoire, who was fourth line last year, fourth line this year, but has been one of kind of those those. 10th, 11th forwards to cycle in and add to these units. And he had a great opportunity, great tip there in front of the net from the shot of the defender. Yeah, and uh, Judkins just getting his stick on it and going up into the netting. Fredette had the other matching penalty on that for uh, Northeast Clinton. Shot by Audi. Good save there by Judkins. Webb picks up the rebound, circling back down to... Merrill, Merrill chips it back up top to Ethan. Ethan trying to hold on to the blue line, can't do so. Phelpser will go the other way with it. Behind the net, gets it back over to Ethan. Ethan with it now, he's got room. He'll break that out. However, intercepted by Johnston, going the other way. And good shot there by Johnston as Telfer makes another save. Johnston, one of those speedy little forwards for this Northeast Clinton team, and uh, he's one of the seniors for this Northeast Clinton team, but he's been on the ice a lot, Cam. I mean, he's uh, he's been in a lot of plays as well. I mean, I, I, I know it's early. We're about 4.33 left in the second, but uh, this team out of Northeast that we're seeing tonight, bud, you had another couple players to it. Like, I, I know, I know... You know, Division One Vermont High School Hockey doesn't have the numbers it used to, but I got to imagine this team would be one you wouldn't want to see in a quarterfinal or even oh, a semifinal. This I is mean, not a playoff, a team you want to meet in the playoffs. I mean, they are just nonstop. They, they have not let down on the uh, pace of the play. Uh, gotten a lot of quality shots. I mean, they were basically dominating the first period. Yeah, right? yeah, for sure. And shot there as that's deflected wide by Frades. It's almost like a CVU, you know, like yeah. one of those small things. Yeah. It's one of those type of just teams that just is a thorn in your side. They remind me of CVU last year in right. that semifinal right. game. I think the Bob Whites end up winning 3-1. Oh, oh, wow. Racine rips one just over Telfer's shoulder. Wow, he, he had a lot of space there. He the, had a lot more room than what he gave it a go for. I think he could have went in on goal almost. Yeah. Oh, come on. And there's going to be a call on <laughs> Frady's. That's a tough one. No, it's... I know. Frady, Frady's giving that little extra shove, and the guy kind of dove there. Uh, I uh, I don't know. I, I, don't, I don't think... <laughs> I don't think Frades was expecting him to kind of flop there. No. But it was a a, a push or hit from behind. I don't, I don't know what the actual call is. It might have been a cross check because um, yeah. it was on the back. That's BFA's second penalty of the game. Audie had the first one in the first with a slashing. And Frades, I'm assuming that was a cross check. Uh, but that was, a, that was a tough one. Tough one for BFA. We're going to listen in and see if we can figure it out. Yeah, I mean, it was right to his back. So Northeast Clinton on the power play, looking to get it to a one-goal differential. Simpson with it behind the net. Up to Racine, shot by Racine. Good save by Telfer. 
And Telfer kind of looks like he's settling in. He had a good game last game, but we both thought he might have been on edge a little bit for some of those shots. But you can see him kind of settle into what he's been known to do specifically. I mean, he was one of their best players last year. Yeah, and, uh, you know, Northeast Clinton scored early in the game. I mean, I don't think he saw very many. He sh- might have shot one shot before that goal, so... Puck in front, Simpson with it, can't get his shot off. Puck goes to the corner as LaValle gives chase. LaValle with it now up top to the point to Letourneau, back to LaValle. LaValle circling, going to look for Letourneau. Shot there, that goes just wide of the far bar. And Racine's going to sneak down in, see if he can collect it. And Simpson able to intercept a dump attempt by Audi. However, puck wrapping around and Webb doing a good job getting it out. Duclon calling for a change. Simpson, one of those players on this team, he had that first goal. He's got a he's got a great shot on him. DFA with it in the neutral zone. Savoy breaks it up and Beauregard dumps it all the way down. Just about two minutes left in the second. Good crowd tonight, Jason. Yeah, good to see some people in the building for once. Racine with it, shot there. And at some point they got to realize ripping it into the center pads of Telfer, he's just too good to give up that type of rebound. Yeah, and I mean, it's great to see them getting these shots on that. They're coming in the zone with speed. And, I mean, look what it did for them in the first period there, you know. Uh... Simpson get coming in the zone with speed and just ripping it off the post. DFA so. gets it out. Quick birthday shout out to Kathy Audi. We had a chance to catch up beforehand with her and John and my father, Jason and I. But again, just wishing you a happy birthday. And uh, always fun to hang out with Kathy and John there. Yeah, get their input on uh, <laughs> the season, what their thoughts are. So always a pleasure being with them. Happy birthday again. About 10 seconds left on the Frady's cross check. Puck comes up top, shot on net, and Telfer doing a good job of covering it up. I mean, Northeast Clinton is getting a lot of pucks on net. I mean, whether it's easy or not for Telfer, he's, he's seen a lot of shots from this team. I think they've racked up around 13 shots so far in this game. BFA's got 16. Yeah, I don't... I mean, BFA is certainly the deeper team, but you, you talk about stacking up the top two lines versus the top two lines. I don't think there's a huge difference in these teams. No, and I mean, you're seeing more quality chances, quality shots from BFA, but yeah. um, they're still, I mean, they're having chances. A little slash there from uh, Chevalier and Northeast Clinton to, uh, I think it might have been uh, Merrill's backside. And Telfer covering up the puck. He'll take the face off in the defensive zone near side as Simpson goes to take the draw against Audi, I believe. Tough to make out the numbers from here. It is Merrow going the other way with Webb and Johnson on the back end. Circles back around. Ethan comes in for support. Sorry, Colin comes in for support on the far side boards to keep it in. Weber with it now below the net, looking to chip it over to Ethan. Ethan with it. Tries to pass, gets tripped up. No call there. And breaking it out the other way is LaValle. And getting it down low, just under a minute left in the second. Only 3-1 Bob Whites. Webb doing a good job finishing his check there. The neutral zone. CJ coming out with it. Puck in the neutral zone. Oh boy. Broken up two on one. Pass over in front. Racine unable to find his man. Great opportunity there late for Northeast. Can't capitalize. Good idea though looking for that back post. CJ, Cammy Johnson with it, down low. Fending off Simpson. Weber picks it up, good move by Weber there, skating the other way. He's got room, however, Duclon calls for the change. I think it was towards the end of his shift. He looked a little uh, 
shot at the end of there. Looked a little tired, but good uh, good result here going into the third for BFA. Yeah, so with that with that being said, um, Bob White's up 3-1. Uh, just trying to look in here for a second. And at this time, I think we're going to take a quick break, get set up for second intermission since we're ready to rock and roll. I think we have Matt Needleman coming up to the box. U Tampa forward, currently ranked first in uh, their conference or club hockey association. So looking to get his intake as a Bob White alumni. Uh, used to play for SUNY Canton. Uh, took a little break. Now playing for U Tampa, one of the premier club hockey teams in the States. Um, and with that being said, we're going to take a quick break, I think. And be back in a couple minutes to bring you the second intermission. Thanks. Welcome back to the Collins Pearly Sports Complex as we as Vermont High School Boys Hockey Action as your BFA Bob Whites currently 1-0 take on Northeast Clinton out of New York, a non-conference game. Uh, Bob White certainly a little sluggish out of the gates, however, have found a way from their contributors of the game against Spalding to kind of factor in. Uh, before we kind of dive into, uh, you know, what we saw that period and going forward with Blister, we've got a special guest, Matt Needleman. Matt Needleman, a forward for U Tampa Club Hockey, currently ranked number one in their association, different uh, club associations, but for their specific conference, ranked one nationally. And uh, Matt, you're, you're a uh, alumni here at BFA. Uh, we're Mr. Hockey, your senior year. Uh, you've done the juniors thing. You played for SUNY Canton and now at U Tampa. Uh, you know, before we get into that, quickly, what have you made out of the game so far? Um, you know, like you said before, BFA with a, with a slowish kind of start to the game. But um, as the game moved on, Towards the end of the first period, it was all BFA, and coming into the last period, I mean, I thought that uh, uh, the opposing team, what are they, Clinton? Yeah, Northeast Clinton. Nor Northeast Clinton. I thought they had a couple good opportunities. Um, number 10 is definitely a threat on their team, but mm -hmm. as far as the game's been played, I'd say uh, it's mostly been BFA in this uh, game, but uh, Telf has looked pretty good tonight. Yeah, he has. He's certainly gobbled up a lot of saves. I think from what we've seen out of this Northeast Clinton team, despite getting buried by double digits in two of their games, uh, I was saying to Jason, you know, kind of scares me because BFA's known to be a premier team, and here's this team over in New York that's 1-2, and two, uh, has a goal differential of minus 20-plus, and uh, they're giving BFA all they have. And those top two lines, I said to Jason, I don't think they're that much worse than our top two lines. Well, Cam, the, the thing is this is, I mean, de definitely different divisions. Um, Vermont and New York State hockey, mm -hmm. as far as high school goes, are completely different. And, you know, I mean, you, you don't know what the competition's like over there. Um, so, some of the teams are very good, so it's definitely a different aspect. But it's nice to see Vermont or BFA getting an out of league yeah. game like this, which I think is good for them. Yes, absolutely, Matt. I couldn't agree more. That's a great point. Wish we could see it a little bit more. I know I've criticized specifically the Doc Tulip, how they have three Vermont teams. I can certainly understand having Essex there, but I've been one of the the individuals that have critiqued playing Spalding three times a year. Spalding is not the team that played you when you were here, and it, it's kind of been one of those throwaway games, throwaway games. It'd be nice to have, whether it be a Northeast Clinton or a St. John's Prep down in Mass or Notre Dame, wherever it may be. So I agree with you there. It, it's certainly nice to see a team from a different league and how BFA matches up. Yeah, exactly. I mean, when I was in school, I always remember looking forward to the teams out of state just to kind of have a different view yep. point and different I mean they, they play the games differently yeah. you know it's different styles of hockey that they're accustomed to and yep. coming back to this game I think Northeast Clinton's kind of brought a little bit of that yep. where it's kind of a closer game for BFA and it's nice for BFA to kind of get a test yep so with that being said Matt obviously you've had some success on the ice as we mentioned uh, one of the top players for Bob White uh, in your generation or your era here 
the four years with BFA, Mr. Hockey his senior year. Um, you've seen levels from youth all the way up to collegiate. Um, what have been some of the things that have allowed you to succeed and develop through those different stages? I mean, let's uh, talk to us a little bit about where you're at now and the success you've had at U Tampa and and how you've gotten it there. How, how you've gotten there. Um, to be honest, like right now playing at U Tampa, I mean, I just kind of went there for school. Yep. Um, but I mean, playing collegiate, it was definitely a, a work ethic process going in. Um, those years of junior hockey and developing as a player and as a person, which was uh, nice to see. But um, now I'm just trying to get my college education and uh, try to move on. Absolutely. And how are you guys looking to round out the season on your end? I know there's talk. Like I said, you know, I've done a little research on my end. I know there's different associations on the club level, but I know you guys are right there as far as your league play is considered. Uh, what do you guys have for the second half of the season? Are you guys halfway through your season? Are you guys have a chance to go to nationals? Uh, what's the development there? So right now we are looking uh, at going to nationals. Um, we're, we're the number one seed right now, and I feel I think it's top eight teams make it. Okay. Um, so we're definitely right there in the mix. As number one, obviously, we're, we're the first ones to get a bid. Yep. But um, that's kind of the way the season's uh, going. Um, we'll, but, you know, it's hockey. We'll see what happens. Absolutely. Well, with that being said, Cam Wood alongside Matt Needleman. Matt, we appreciate your special guest appearance. Always good to hear from you. Matt, big supporter of BFA Hockey. With that being said, Cameron Wood, we're going to take a quick break here at the Collins Burley Sports Complex. Get you back with Uncle Blister to give you a kind of game recap, and we'll get into our third period action as the Bob Whites find themselves only up 3-1 to one, headed into the third. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the Collins Pro Sports Complex. Cameron Wood alongside Jason Bliss. Just had special guest Matt Needleman, U Tampa hockey player, BFA alumni, Mr. Hockey. Good to have Matt on here. He's actually been calling some games with his father, Mark, for the girls varsity team so again love his insight big hockey supporter in the community jason boys set to take the ice head in the third only up three one uh just want to kind of get your take if you want to give us a little recap of the second or where we're at and where we're headed you know i'd love to hear from you yeah i'm a little surprised at this northeast clinton te team to be honest i think uh reading their stats and their standings and you know the results this year of how they've been doing uh I can't imagine the teams they play because uh, right. they're looking a lot better than I thought they were. I gave, I guess I didn't give them enough credit. They're a great team. They're fit. They, the pace of their play is phenomenal. Uh, they're out shooting BFA 19 to 18 right now, shockingly. Uh, but BFA coming on a lot stronger in the second half of this game, uh, especially going to the third, being up three to one. That's big for them. Savoy, you know, getting his seventh point of the year. Um, Johnson, two goals, two assists this year, so he's uh, contributing heavily. Borgar getting a goal and two assists uh, on the year, three points for him, and uh, good to see Colinati getting on the board as well. I, I think BFA's just got to keep up the pace, uh, keep up the physicality, and uh, for Northeast Clinton, I think they just got to keep getting those uh, shots on net and just get try to get a little more quality chances. But uh, Telfer seeing the puck well, I think. Uh, both teams just doing a job staying out of the box, so that's uh, that's a plus for both teams as well. Yeah, it hasn't been a physical game as what I had thought, but both teams kind of playing discipline, mistake-free for the most part. Yeah. Certainly think BFA has got the edge with goaltending, certainly have the more depth, but you start stacking the top three, four, five players. I don't know, Racine and Simpson seem just as good as anybody else out there on the ice. Yeah, they're doing very well. Um, you know, Simpson had that. Uh, I think he was the, yeah, Simpson had the first goal early on, and uh, he's got a great release on him, and uh, I'd like to see some more of that from him, but uh, let's see if BFA can uh, keep up the pace here with this Northeast Clinton team. So we are underway. Just a quick reminder, Northwest Access TV is a nonprofit organization. If you are enjoying the sports coverage throughout the year, please consider making a donation. Just visit northwestaccess.tv backslash donation. So we are underway. Bob White's up 3-1, looking to go 2-0 and on the season. Again, this is non-league play. Not sure how that factors in on the VPA index points. Again, VPA kind of outsourcing their marketing platform through SB Live, and we haven't really been able to make much out of that. 
Um, but with that being said, regardless, looking to get to two and zero. Oh. Yeah, Cam, it's tough just not having a site that's updated. And, yeah. You know, the VPA having, was good about that. I know, but having those stats and knowing where teams are at is yep. huge. And yep. uh, I mean, we're doing the best we can, but uh, yeah, it's it's been tough so far. But you know, we just got to adapt and and go from there. Matt Merrill gets it to Audie. Audie there. Shoots it in front as Webb unable to get the rebound. There comes a shot from the near side. Puck in front. Wow. As the goaltender of Northeast Clin, Judkins, couldn't see it. Again, we mentioned early in the first, really having trouble seeing the puck tonight. And Judkins doesn't have his stick. One of his defensemen tried to drop him a stick, and that laid on the ice as well. And wow. Webb takes advantage. Blister just calls it, picks it up behind the net. Circles back around, goes near side, barred down, and there's that Levi Webb that we saw last year in that first line. I kind of criticized him a little bit from coming out a little flat, but that's what they can do in a moment's notice, Jason. You know, a goalie drops his stick. It's almost like sheer panic for him. What do I do? What do I do? Someone give me a stick, and and, yep. and your players are almost doing the same thing. Like, get the goalie a stick. Get the goalie a stick. Yep. You could see the chaos happening in front of the net. Webb taking advantage of that, seeing the open ice right in front and just burying a shot top corner uh, on Judkins. And, and that was just unfortunate for Judkins losing his sticks, but uh, that's what happens. Puck in wow. front. There's a goal. Answers right back. Wow. By number 18, Winfred Simpson. Simpson's second goal of the game. As Simpson gets a puck thrown in front and just kind of chips it up the far right corner of Telford. Telford didn't even have a chance to see that cup. I mean, it was just immediately came out to uh, Simpson in front of the net, and he buried it on top corner above uh, Telford's glove. And uh, you don't see Telford let in too many goals all year, and he's let in two this game. So... Uh, both of uh, Simpson's shots. So. Well, I, as much as Spalding kind of got their own scoring opportunities and shots on the outside, I don't think they that he's really faced a Simpson or a Racine who can kind of score willingly in like an open slot. So yeah. I'm sure it's probably somewhat new to Telfer. And, you know, he hasn't seen playmakers to this ability thus far in the year. Yeah, and I was just going to say how, you know, BFA was up 3-1, kind of a dangerous lead. You yep. go up 4-1, and then Northeast Clinton answers right back. So we're right back to uh, square one of starting where we did in the third. So, uh, And I almost, I was going to compliment Toby because I know he spoke to the boys. And, and like we had said early, I'd said, hey, this team, and specifically MVU, they're going to come out gunning. But stay disciplined, stay aggressive. They're going to fizzle out. And I kind of thought that with that 4-1 lead. But sure enough, when you've got playmakers that Northeast Clinton has, you can certainly keep yourself in the game with opportunities like that. Yeah, and then that's exactly what you want to do. Uh, if the other team scores, you want to have that quick goal answer back and, and say we're still in this. Puck in front. Rafferty unable to get the shot off. Liam Wood keeping it in for the Bob Whites up top. Liam with it, unable to hold on. Puck comes out to Cam Johnson. Cam Johnson looking to throw it in. Gets it in the zone. Wood with it on the far side boards. Chips it down low. Puck gets pushed back up top to Racine. Racine unable to break out through the neutral zone as Cam Piper does a good job throwing it on net for a shot there. And Matt Merrill picking up a puck in the offensive zone as Northeast Clinton tries to break it out. Webb comes in for support, circling back around, looking for a man. Dumps it back down low to Merrill. Merrill with it now. Merrill unable to hold on. Simpson getting it over to Racine. Racine skating. He's got his line mate, Ebersole. Throws the puck in front, unable to get the shot off. Went off the netting. Surprised got, that he called that. I don't know if, oh, Eternal might be calling a penalty. Interference? Yeah. Who is it on, Bliss? Uh, I'm not sure. I, I saw the puck hit the netting, and then all of a sudden, uh, I think it might be on, uh, looks like it's on Merrill. Oh, jeez. But the puck went up into the netting. I, yeah. was, I was expecting a whistle. Then the next thing you know, Merrill goes to the box. So It's weird that they would call an interference if the puck was already going up and out of play. Well, that's the thing. In that. Almost like a pass interference can't be called in football if the puck's tipped. You yeah. know what I'm saying? But 
nonetheless, I, I didn't see it clearly, so. I mean, I was, like I said, looking at the uh, puck going out of the zone, but interference call there on Merrill, and hopefully, uh, hopefully they can kill this off, BFA. So Wood and Webb out there to kill for the forwards. You've got Lanfear and Audi for defense. And great play wow. by Ezra Lanfear. Unable to get it out, but that was a great poke check there. Good job, Laterno, for Northeast Clinton keeping in the zone. Ethan picking it up. Ethan lays out one of the Cougars. Is that a penalty? As Racine hits the ice, but like Jason said, might be a delayed call yeah, there. It's a delayed call. Not sure what it would be, as it seemed like shoulder. Oh, elbow. elbow. See, I thought it was just the shoulder high, but he he must be saying that when he went to take that hit, that bottom elbow kind of came up. Yeah. And was a part of the lead uh, impact there. And now BFA taking two penalties in a row. <laughs> Northeast Clinton going uh, onto a five-on-three power play, taking a timeout, get a little rest, and uh, not a great position for BFA in this third period. Great play by Scotty LaFontaine there to take the take the timeout as he's got 112 on the Merrill in two minutes on the Audi. Arguably two of your best players yeah. on BFA. Yeah. Both off the ice for a 115 plus and all of a sudden this could potentially be a very close game and one thing we've criticized about this Bob White team, especially getting late in the season when you're talking quarterfinal action, is in these one-goal games against these two-line teams that are just well-conditioned. Right. They've got a couple guys who can make things happen on their own, and they get in these one-goal games, and they have trouble staying aggressive. I don't really think Toby's system, it's more of a disciplined, right. break it out wide, get it down low. It's not really like an attack, jump on you, yeah. which ultimately allows if teams can kind of break up that, that, that break out that transition from the defensive to neutral zone to kind of get these odd man rushes and tie the game up. Yeah. So it, it, I think it puts the Bob Whites in a vulnerable position right now in the late stages. I mean, Savoy had that shorthanded goal earlier in the second period. I, I mean, you could have these these opportunities where, you know, you could kill, you know, do it, have a good penalty kill, have the puck come out and, and get an odd man rush or whatever, you know. Puck in front comes over, and Colin doing a good job getting all the way down low. Merrill just under a minute left in the box. Ethan obviously with that elbowing. I I, I don't know. It it's seemed like, I mean, it was tough. I don't know. It didn't seem like an elbow, but maybe. I don't know. Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> And that was bar bar in, however, offsides call. That think, was in, correct? I think Telfer heard the whistle, and I don't know. I mean, it was a good shot, but I don't, I don't know if that was being stopped regardless. That, was, that was a good shot. That was, that was pretty was impressive. Posting in, so. Uh, Post posted. The, <laughs> Racine put his hands up. Like, <laughs> Come on, give me that. Oh, good pass. Northeast Clint with it now. Pass in front, tip there just wide as Simpson can't find the far post. Cuck in front, up top to the point to Racine, shot there. That goes just wide. Another great opportunity by this Northeast Clinton team. They work the puck around very well. Oh, they well. do. Very well. With it now, up top. Back to the far side winger, pass in front. Oh. Can't find Lavalley. However, puck comes up front to Racine, unable to keep in. And and I, 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 I mean, BFA is the better team in my opinion. But this Northeast Clinton team has moved the puck way better than the Bob Whites. Oh, tonight. look at Merrill here. And Merrill breaks one up, one on one breakaway, shoots that great blocker save by Judkins. Like I was saying earlier, these opportunities can happen. You got yep. your speedy forwards; they can have that, those breakaways on these. Uh, penalty kills. Good job by Cam Piper getting that through the neutral zone out into the offensive zone. However, breaking out the other way is Northeast Clint. With it now is Lavalley. Lavalley tries to chip it over. Scene can't do so. Comes to Cam Johnson. He's going to dump that all the way down. And Bob White's able to kill a five on three for a minute twelve as Ethan, the second of the two, will come out of the box now for full strength. Tough there for Northeast Clinton. You got to take advantage on that five on three. They they had a good puck work, but 
just couldn't capitalize. With it now, up top is Northeast Clinton. Gets it down low. Doing work is Ebersole. Pass in front. Johnston unable to connect. However, another opportunity. Pass comes out in front for Northeast Clinton. However, picked up by Johnson going the other way. He's got a three on two with Schreindorfer and Rafferty looking for some one shot there. Ooh. And Puck dribbles off the blocker of Judkins. And sending it all the way around is Ebersole trying to break it out. Puck comes out to the neutral zone. Schreindorfer picks it up, chips it in. Bob White's get a change. Would have liked to see him work the puck around a little bit more on that three on two, but. Beauregard uh, doing a good job pressuring the defenseman. I think Lanfears look good tonight from a defensive yeah. standpoint. We're watching him now one on one. Good job blocking the guy outside, chipping the puck to himself, breaking it out the other way. Good shift there by Lamp. I, I like him at the defensive spot. I really do. Yeah, and he's one of those players you can sort of transition yeah. for you, which is good. But, yeah, he's looking great. Shot there. That goes wide. Ethan with a great opportunity. I don't think Judkins saw that at any point. About 6.30 left in the third. Bob White's up 4-2. Those deep shots from the point he's having yeah. trouble seeing for sure. Shot on that. That goes wide. Jeez, Ethan's shot's gotten a lot heavier over this past year, in my opinion. Yeah, I mean, he let that one go there. It just missed wide, but had a lot of steam on it. Good transition uh, breakout pass to Beauregard. However, incept intercepted going the other way as Lavallee Racine comes in to pick it up. He'll be one-on-one -on -one with Lanfear. Lanfear lays the body, gets it over to Savoy. Savoy looks to chip it to Wilbur. However, unable to connect. Puck comes all the way around as Merrill's out there for this first unit making the transition. Having trouble breaking it out here. For yeah. the Weber with it behind the net. Gets it over to Ethan. Looking for Maddie. However, circles back around. Circles back. Chips it to Merrill. Merrill trying to break it out. Still in. And Northeast Clinton holding the line. Just about five minutes left in the third. I guess it did come out of the zone. That was, I thought it was very yeah. close. Offsides. Very close, but hey. Good shift by Northeast Clinton. I mean, just all over BFA in their uh, defensive zone. So, Okay, so it, I'm going to say this right now. I'm curious how my dad's going to come after me. But I, I, from, what I, from what I know <laughs> so go. far... I don't think you can name four teams better than this Northeast Clinton team in the state of Vermont. I don't think so. Name them. I don't gonna, think you I'm, can. I'm going to have to agree with you. I, and and to me, coming into this game, that's shocking. But Yes. Pass out front. Over to Merrill. Unable to connect off the Audi pass. First unit out here. They're, they set up so well. You know, they have guys that can set each other up so well. And they're moving. Their heads are up. Exactly. Frady's doing a good job there on the far side boards. Trying to chip it up to his winger. Well, and they're fit. They're yeah. fit, too. That's, yeah. You know, that's showing. With it now. Ooh, is Merrill just went down there. Looks like Merrill maybe Ooh. with a with a block shot. It's on the inside of his uh, calf and, muscle. And a shot there by Chevalier, the captain. I mean, honestly, the two goals that Telfer let in, like, I don't know if there's there's no other goalie at this level making those saves. Like, other than that, he's played great position from right. a goaltender's perspective. I mean, the first one was a great shot post and then second one came from behind him and immediately went top corner. Yeah. It's, yeah. He proved that last year with a 9.57 save percentage that he's not letting a lot of shots in. So 
that just shows how good and how well placed these shots have been for this Northeast Clinton team, both by uh, Simpson. Just remember folks, stay tuned for the Northwest player of the game. Aiden Savoy getting the last one. We'll have a new one handed out tonight. Of course, he'd probably be a candidate for this game too, but yeah. <laughs> we like to distribute it to multiple players. So stay tuned for that, and uh, we'll have that announcement post game for you. 3.30 left in the third, 4-2 Bob Whites. And I wonder if Northeast Clinton's going to pull this goalie around a minute and a half. Hopefully BFA can stay composed, stay out of the box. Schreindorfer doing work alongside the boards. He's been a great pickup for the Bob great Whites addition. from MVU. Great I'm addition. sure MVU misses him. Yes. Shot there, up and wide. Northeast Clinton with it behind the net is Racine. Racine circling back around. Looking up top for Owen Roberts. Can't find him. Throws it in front of the net instead. Picked back up by Schreindorfer. Schreindorfer with it. And he does work as him and Whoa. Savoy Bowling pins at the blue tag line. team and find a way to get the puck down low. Second unit out here for the Bob Whites. Sean Beauregard with it Ooh, in the offensive zone. And there is a whistle as, I don't know, what is that, offsides? I don't even know. Close, uh, looked like BFA almost had a tripping call in their uh, Northeast Clinton zone. I got away with that one. I don't know if it was Savoy or the Beauregard, but. It's crazy how, like, quiet people are in here for the amount of people. I know. I don't know if that's just me. But. They got a headset on. <laughs> Oh, oh, and there's a great shot in front. <laughs> he lost his stick again. <laughs> and another another shot that Judkins couldn't see. Gavin Clark with an absolute rip. We had mentioned Gavin, I believe, being the only freshman on the team, how good he did for his first game in defense, stepping into a position that was uncertainty for this program after last. Losing Nathan Owen and um, uh, Nathan Warren. Owen and Morin, we had kind of thought who was going to step up, and and, and um, sure enough, the freshman Clark with a great scoring opportunity there. So Judkins just came out. He's coming back to the bench. He came out the first time, went back to the goal. He's fully out now. Six on five. Northeast Clinton. Ethan Audie with it, trying to break it out through Webb. Three BFA players on the near side. Puck comes out. Northeast Clinton trying to gain possession. Someone Clark made. with it now. He's intercepted. Whoa. Puck in front. And oh, there's an opportunity as Telfer doing a good job pushing the puck away. Wow. They're doing a good job keeping this puck in pressure in the zone. Just under a minute left in this game as BFA, Levi Webb with it. Trying to get it down low, can't do so. LaValle for Northeast coming the other way. Puck intercepted by Merrill in the central zone. Oh, However, Ebersole picking that up for Northeast Clinton, trying to get it down, can't do so. Puck going the other way. Merrill with it now, one on one, and he is going to score to wrap this up. Maddie Merrill sealing the deal with 30.3. Left on the clock, and the Bob Whites will go to 2 and 0 on the season with a thirsty matchup against the MVU Thunderbirds, who I don't think know what they have coming for them. But regardless, fending off this Northeast team that has been gritty from start to finish. Yeah, Merrill finding a way to sort of flip the puck up over the defenseman, taking the puck in and having the open net, but... Hold on a sec. Unassisted, but... The 5-2 score does not represent how this game no. was played. No. It, 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 to me, this wasn't a three-goal... Well, I mean, the open net, but granted, Northeast Clinton was a phenomenal hockey team. And it was a great game to watch. And with that being said, we will hit zeros, and the Bob Whites will go to 2-0 oh 
as Northeast Clinton comes out swinging with the early one nothing lead. However, this deep Bob White team, just too much for them to handle. Yeah, Cam, uh, just a lot of shots for... A lot of shots for Northeast Clinton, a lot of shots for BFA. BFA getting more of the quality chances, capitalizing on uh, that power play early in the first. And, uh, I mean, i, I got to give a lot of credit to this Northeast Clinton team for coming here um, and playing the way they did. Very fit team, smaller team, but very, very uh, well coached and uh, had some great playmaking uh, setups in front of the net in uh, the BFA zone. No, they had a solid line and a half, two lines, and I was very impressed with this team. I thought it was going to be a little bit more physical, which would have yep. played hands into Northeast Clinton. Um, nonetheless, you know, I think the Bob Whites were the team, if anything, who kind of drew a little bit of um, some issues in the penalty box, a little bit of discipline issues, but then again, um, you know, doing a good job killing those penalties. I know they had a penalty kill goal, um, a PK goal, so that's always nice. That's a, that's a positive there. You, you take that away, and then all of a sudden it's a 4-3 before that empty netter. Right. Um, and um, with with that being said, um, you know, I, I like you said, I, I just I wasn't really expecting that. I didn't think Judkins was great. Um, I thought Telfer was smart tonight. Yeah. Um, I don't think it was his best game. No. Um, but, granted, the shots that he yeah. let in were great shots. Yep. Um, you know, I think we'll see better games out of him later in the year. But um, to only allow two goals that game was great for him. He made a ton of good saves. He had about, uh, I think it was close to 22 shots um, Northeast Clinton put on him. So, yeah, I mean, he saw the ice well. Judkins, on the other hand, tough vision from the outer uh, blue line shots, a uh, couple bouncing shots. But, uh, yeah, it's too bad. Uh, I think this Northeast Clinton team, though, you know, generally is a great hockey team. So yeah. uh, I was happy with how they and played. And they, they could have played some type of, like, midget travel team or something like that. But, right. again, I, I had said this, and I know it's early, and we've seen Spalding play. We've seen BFA play twice. Um, my brother and I had seen the South Burlington game, uh, for a scrimmage. Um, and then, and we know the rice result. Um, but w with that being said, I mean, you take away, you, you take away a BFA, you take away a rice and you take away an Essex and maybe, maybe not a Colchester I gotta imagine this team conditioned like this, yeah, uh, with a little bit sharper goaltending. I gotta imagine they're right in the mix for Division One over here. They'd be t As they'd be top three or four, easy. Yeah, easy. And I think they had a good game. I, I don't know, um, but this is. I know through the youth, youth association, it's kind of like an out of state rivalry, or at least it was when we played Sassa and we yeah. played Rouse's Point. Like we said, always physical games, close games. Um, so a, a lot of the same kids growing up through the program playing for these high schools. It's what we saw tonight. Um, but much better game than what I was anticipating. Um, with that being said, you know, I, I know we had five goals there. We had the unassisted empty netter there for Matty Merrill. Um, we saw the two goals from Simpson, I believe. Simpson had two goals, yep. For yep. Northeast Clinton, uh, both goals. But other than that, do you want to just walk through the, the, the game summary as far as who did what from a, from a point perspective? Maybe a, a quick roundabout on what the penalties were. I don't think we had any power play goals. We had that one penalty goal, penalty kill goal by Savoy, yep. which was unassisted. Um, yes. But from there, what else did we have? Simpson had that first goal for Northeast Clinton. Um, BFA getting on the board uh, in the first period, late in the first. Johnson from Audi and Savoy. Uh, then Savoy having that unassisted breakaway goal. Um, and then uh, Beauregard getting on the board from Audi and Webb. And um, Johnson getting on the board again um, later in the game and Merrill capping off that last goal. Excuse me, Webb had the uh, fourth goal and Merrill having the uh, last goal. So 
Uh, BFA, you know, they had the matching penalty in the second period, and then Merrill taking the penalty and Audi taking that elbowing call, but killing off those penalties and staying strong there was great. Um, but overall, shots were right about even for both teams. And uh, I, I think BFA played very well. And, yeah. and really a guy that stuck out to me was Johnson with, you know, two goals in this game. I mean, yeah. he's just, he's been playing great this year. Yeah, Savoy. Was it two goals? He, he had two goals. Okay, I wasn't yeah. sure. It wasn't a goal and assist? No, nope, he had two goals. Okay, did he have an assist on top of that? He did not have an assist. Okay. He had two goals. One in the first, one in the second. Okay. And I, and I stand corrected. I think I kind of harped on BFA maybe getting in the penalty box, but it seemed like there was only three penalties on BFA the whole game. Uh, yep. They had the matching. In the yep. set. They had the, well, the first penalty. Audi had one in the first. They had the matching and then the, the two. two in the, the So we'll, we'll wave the matching. So three penalties, right. which matches Spalding. Again, if BFA keeps three penalties or less, on the board, they're going to be tough to beat. I don't care who they play. Right. Um, so another sound sound game from the Bob Whites. Um, you know, if we're going to play devil's advocate again, I, I I didn't I didn't love the puck movement on their yeah. end. I, I think you know we could sit here and we could pump up this team all we want, but I think bringing an honorable. Um, you know, an honorable production and, and, and um, presentation to the audience, we got to talk about some things that they can work on. And, and I specifically don't think they've been moving the puck well. Um, you know, I, I know Toby's very particular about getting the puck down low and, yeah. and certain guys forechecking and whatnot. And I certainly understand that, especially at the beginning of the season. But certainly one thing I, I look for them to work on because if that team moved the puck like the Northeast Clinton team, yeah. that would have been seven to two without right. an empty net goal. Right, right. Um, and it's, it's just there's so much potential and depth out of this team. You just obviously want to see the best for them. And that'll come as the year goes on. For sure, too. you'll see a lot more. Um, so with with that being said, obviously we have our Northwest Access Player of the Game in Savoy getting it last week. Shirts still back ordered. Um, obviously issues with the, uh, with the supply chain, um, as I mentioned last time. So we will get those out. Aiden getting it last game. Um, you know, Aiden probably another candidate, uh, another strong showing confidence. But um, I think we've got we've to give it to some other people who also stand yeah. out. Um, even though Aiden had five points last game, there were some other guys who stood out. And, and to me, the same thing tonight. Um, you know, I... I Despite the two goals, you know, I did think that Telfer played pretty disciplined. Maybe not a player of the game, but I think he's right there. Yep. Um, I think Colin Audi continues to move that puck for the first line, a line that's kind of struggled to move the puck as of late. Yep. Um, so I look at him. Webb had two points, goal and assist. Yep, so uh, Webb's starting to add in on the production. Beauregard starting to yep. pile, up, pile on the points. What Beauregard have tonight? Beauregard had... He had a goal. Just had a goal. Okay, so Bobo with a goal. So but two assists prior to this right, game. Right, so he's got four points. Um, but I, I think, I think, or you excuse know, me, two assists, so he had three points, yeah. Um, but, but I think with that being said, we're both, you know, we've been doing this long enough. We're both on the same page here. I mean, uh, Cammy Johnson, I started calling him CJ. I think that, <laughs> that's his showtime name. I'm going to have to filter that one through Liam to make sure he likes it first, but um, um, Cam Johnson, and, and we mentioned him last game as well, right. um, Cam Johnson going into this game, through one game, was the second leading scorer on this team, he had three points, then he just added the two goals, he didn't have an assist, you said? No. Okay, so Cam Johnson with five points, but the two goals tonight, but you, you put those goals aside... The confidence that I saw him stepping up in the play, breaking out from the defensive zone to the neutral zone, holding the blue line, yeah. uh, stepping in on the hash marks on rebounds. I mean, that to me is a defenseman who can carry you right. throughout the season and add to the Gavin Frady's, the Ethan Audis. I mean, you start adding another one of those players to the mix, this is going to be the same defense we talked about last year. Yeah, and I mean, he's he's just proving that so far, and I can only imagine how much better he's going to get as the year goes on with just 
piling up these points early on in the year and just having that confidence of, you know, putting up those points and, you know, pushing him to say, oh, I can move the puck forward. You know, I can, I can rush the puck. I can get in the, you know, get grinding in there. Again, as mentioned, Cam Johnson hurt freshman year. Um, but uh, again, last year and then even stepping up to this year has kind of triggered almost like Aiden has just to another level. Um, you know, I- I've got him in BFA's top three defensemen. And tonight, with that being said, I think it's hands down Cam Johnson, yeah, player of the game. I agree. Good job, Cam. Uh, we're proud of you. Uh, enjoy watching you as the other players. We're going to get you your shirt, like we said, as they come in. Those will be handed out. So congratulations again. If you see Cam in the local community, let him know. Good game. He's our Northwest player uh, of the game, Northwest Access player of the game. Um, With that being said, we're just going to finish up here. Um, Let's take a moment to thank our sponsors, Northwestern Orthopedics, Collins Pearly Sports and Fitness Center, Barrett Ford, uh, JC Image, Handy Toyota. If your business would like to be a sponsor for Northwest Access TV sport coverage for this winter, please contact 802-782-8676. With that blister, uh, we've got a game on New Year's Eve at 2 o'clock. I unfortunately have um, a wedding I have to attend to, so I will be doing introduction, first and second um, periods and intermission, and then my father, Chris Wood, who kind of got me into this gig, is going to be stepping in for the third period with you and rounding out the uh, the um, uh, third period, the, the third period in, in the post game. Yep, I will be looking forward to that and uh, having your dad join and uh, you know give his uh, expertise and uh, you, you know he's a veteran in doing this. So uh, yeah, we'll look forward to doing that. And and we got MVU. I think currently I know they were leading tonight, but they might have been one and two going into yeah. tonight. I think they got the W against. Are they playing MMU? Yeah, but they were down two to one. Oh, they were okay. So I'm not sure. So they were down two to one. So we're not sure if they're coming in one three or two and two on the year. I know they got an absolute beating against number four Colchester in our power rankings. Yeah. Um, I got to imagine that this Bob White team is going to be a little bit more ready to go and going to pounce a little bit earlier than what we saw tonight. Yeah. And uh, I, I know it's going to be a great crowd. I'm sure it's going to be door-to-door. But I really look for the Bob Whites to absolutely step on the Thunderbirds come Friday. Well, and it's, you know, it's a rival game. Yeah. I mean, this is what we love. We love these games. We we always used to love playing in rival games. So, yeah. I think Anything could happen with that being said. Right, yeah. But uh, it'll, it'll be fun to watch. So, looking forward to it. With that being said, Cameron Wood alongside Jason Bliss, Northwest Access TV. We look forward to you joining on Friday. BFA versus MVU, 2 o'clock on Friday, as mentioned, here at the Complex. And Good we, night, folks. We always like to thank the camera people yeah, for Northwest hey. Access. So <laughs> thank you guys and uh, everything you do. So Absolutely. Cheers. Good, Good night, night, everyone. Folks.